Here is a wild plant that is much more common than you may think, wild oats. Though it is a different species from the oats you find in the store, it is prepared in the same way and has a nearly identical nutrition value, being high in protein, carbohydrates, iron, and other minerals. Wild oats are very easy to prepare. Simply harvest them when they are ripe, as seen here, peel away the outer layer, and cook the inside just as you would a regular oat. Or, if you wish, you can even make it into flour. Though oats' primary use is in the edible category, it has also found its way into numerous skin treatments, lotions, and oat baths, being very healthy for your skin. Wild oats are almost considered a weed and can be found growing all across the globe, everywhere from wide open fields to abandoned lots. Here is another tasty wild plant, wild mustard. There are dozens of species of wild mustard growing all across the world and all have identical uses. Mustard, like many other wild useful plants, is often considered a weed and can be growing everywhere from open fields to abandoned lots. The leaves of the mustard plant are highly edible, are great in soups and stews, and very nutritious with their B vitamin content. The flowers of the mustard plant are also edible and at times in the year have a peppery bite. Just before the mustard flower forms, it appears like a small nodule that tastes nearly identical to broccoli. If you are lucky enough to consume a mustard flower when it is seeding, you will be treated with a very similar taste to that which you would get out of a mustard bottle, for it is the crushed seed of the mustard plant that is the base for mustard sauce in the market. Mustard is not only edible, but is medicinal as well. The flowers of the mustard plant serve as a powerful anti-inflammatory and are great as a poultice for any kind of swollen joints or injuries. Mustard poultices were even used on people's chests for bronchitis. Be careful when using a mustard poultice, for the oils may irritate some people's skins. It is recommended, if you experience the skin irritation, to put a thin layer of cloth between your skin and the mustard and continue with the poultice. Now for the thistle plant. Thistles grow in many shapes and sizes, and most thistles with this style of appearance will have the same uses. And with thistles like these, all parts are edible. The long carrot-like root will have very little flavor, but is high in carbohydrates and great in soups, salads, or even fresh. The stalk of the thistle plant can be peeled, sliced, and eaten fresh or in salads, the leaves can be trimmed of their thorns and eaten as well. Thistles are related to artichokes, and it is said artichokes evolved from thistles. That being said, 
You may harvest the immature flower heads, slice them open, and eat the green pith inside, which has a very similar flavor to the artichoke. Once again, like many wild useful plants, thistles are often considered a weed and grow everywhere from creek sides to open fields to abandoned lots. They require very little moisture to grow and often grow in poor soils, which makes them a great survival food, as they can be found almost anywhere. Here we have a very special thistle, one that is also highly medicinal, the milk thistle. Milk thistle is easy to separate from the other thistles because of the milky-like stripes in its leaves. The milk thistle plant contains a very special seed. Once the flower goes from the color seen here to white, it has produced its large black seed which can be easily harvested. These large black seeds contain an alcohol-soluble chemical that is said to have wonderful effects on the human liver and even helps to purify your body. By soaking these seeds in alcohol and consuming the alcohol, you can introduce this chemical to your body and this is exactly how milk thistle extract is sold in the stores. Here we have a plant you may already be familiar with. It may grow in ponds in your area or you may have even seen it in floral arrangements. Here we have the noble cattail. The cattail plant is very useful to man and, much like thistle, most parts are edible. The long tap roots and the short spaghetti-like roots are both edible fresh or boiled or even steamed and contain more carbohydrates than even corn. These roots contain 40% carbohydrates and most of that is starch, which makes it a high energy food. The brown stalk, though popular in floral arrangements, is also edible. It is edible, however, before it turns brown when it is in its green stage. Harvest when green and boil until soft and you will enjoy a flavor much like corn. The nickname for this green stalk is actually Indian corn. Just before the stalk turns brown, you will see yellow begin to appear in the green. This yellow is the prolific pollen that the plant generates. The stalk, when beginning to yellow, can simply be shaken into a bag and large amounts of pollen will be shaken out. This pollen is used exactly like baking flour and is highly nutritious and tasty. We recommend mixing this pollen, sugar, butter, and a little baking soda to make a very tasty cattail cookie. Here is a very unique trait of the cattail. After the stalk has been browned for a long period of time, the seed will form. This seed is attached to down. The down is easily removed from the stalk and makes an exceptional fire tinder as seen here. You may have brushed through it before and seen this natural down, which is actually a good fire tinder. In order for it to carry a spark really well, you want to pack it down really good. But uh, just to get it to ignite with a flint striker can be done quite simply. Now watch this. So it has a very high surface to volume ratio.
This is with no treatment at all. I just picked this from the cat company. This down is also great for pillows, blankets, or anything you would use goose down for. Now for another plant common to wetlands across the world, tulies, or bulrushes if you will. Wherever tulies grow, they are used by man for a wide range of purposes. First, the edible category. The mature flower heads seen here contain a large black seed which is easily processed in a flower. The young roots of many species of tule are also eaten after boiled and rendered soft. Thule's most constructive use, if you will, is in the utility category. Thule reeds are used for almost too much to mention here. They were bundled together into floats and small watercraft, made into duck blinds and duck decoys for hunting, made into mats for sleeping and lying on, gathered into bundles for shelter coverings and bedding, used as cordage as is or after using the reverse wrap method. They were made into sandals and tulies like the Egyptian papyrus were even processed in a paper. Tulies are a dominant force in their ecosystem. They provide cover for waterfowl and at least one species of elk, the tule elk, even evolved to live in them. Tulies are extremely useful, and we hope you get out there and play with them a little yourself. Now for another amazing plant, the horsetail plant. The horsetail plant is common to moist meadows and creek sides all across the world and is one of the most ancient plants on the earth existing since the time of the dinosaurs. In the edible category, the young shoots when curly and barely coming out of the ground are said to be edible after being cooked. Horsetail's primary use is in the medicinal category, however. Horsetail is high in water-soluble silica. Silica is a building block of hair, skin, nails, and connective tissue, and when horsetail is made into a mild decoction and taken internally, it is said to benefit all of these systems. Horsetail was frequently used as a tea internally by Native Americans for bladder conditions as well. The tea from the horsetail can also be made extra strong and used externally. It is used as a hair rinse, a nail soak, and even a skin wash. In the utility category, the high silica content makes horsetail very abrasive, and one of its other common names is scouring rush, as pioneers used it to scrub their pots and pans and polish their silver. 
The powdered horsetail plant is even finding its way into natural toothpaste as a whitener to polish teeth. Now for another powerful medicinal plant, mulin. Mulin is found growing in moist meadows and along creek sides all across the globe. Mulin is a famous medicinal plant for lung conditions, bronchitis, and chest colds. The oil from its flowers is also said to be antifungal and applied as such. The leaf is made into a concoction and taken internally for these ailments, and surprisingly, the leaf is also rolled into cigars and smoked for bronchitis, which may sound counterintuitive, however, the smoke is simply a delivery system for the active chemicals within the plant. The oil from its flowers is also said to be antifungal and applied as such. In the utility category, mulin also makes a fine fire tinder. Here we have the mugwort plant. Mugwort can be found growing in moist meadows and along creeks all across the globe. Mugwort's primary use is in the medicinal category. It is made into a mild concoction and used internally for epilepsy as well as problem menstruation. For Externally, the mugwort plant is made into a poultice and applied to strains, sprains, bruises, breaks, and swellings, and any injury where the skin is not broken. In the utility category, mugwort is rubbed around the body to serve as an insect repellent. Also, the dead and dry leaves are bundled in a bunch and make an excellent primitive fire tinder. Here we have the majestic pine tree, which is full of uses that may surprise you. First is the edible category. Believe it or not, the inner bark of the pine tree, the only living layer or cambium layer, has historically been processed into bread or simply eaten right off the bark in times of famine. Also, the needles are high in vitamin C and make a delicious tea 
and is even finding its way into health food stores as a juice. The pine is not only high in vitamin C, but has now been found In the medicinal category, the aforementioned pygnogenols, as well as the pine needle tea, are used to boost the immune system and fight off colds and flus. The sap of the pine tree is what I like to refer to as caveman neosporin, as it has been applied as a wound covering since ancient times, as most bacteria cannot grow in the sap. In the utility category, Pine has a plethora of uses. The soft wood of the pine is great as a baseboard for primitive fire making. The needles are used in basket craft and for shelters and matting. The hardened sap is easily melted onto objects and used as a glue. And the sap is even steam distilled into turpentine. As you can see, the pine is not just a beautiful, but very useful tree. Now we will cover a few desert plants. We will begin with the yucca plant. Though there are many species of yucca, all with a wide variety of uses, we will cover yucca whiplay, or Our Lord's Candle. This yucca plant is one of the most useful plants in the desert. In the edible category, the caudex, or large stalk growing out of the yucca, is roasted when green and young, and has a flavor halfway between sweet potato and watermelon. It is very sugary and can even be made into alcohol. Its flowers, which give it its common name, Our Lord's Candle, are eaten raw off the plant and even mixed in salads. In the medicinal category, the roots of yucca whiplay are steamed and applied to sore joints and said to contain salicylic acid. The same ingredient aspirin is made from, which is considered to be a powerful anti-inflammatory. In the utility category, as mentioned in previous sections, the leaf and the root of the yucca whiplay make an excellent soap. The leaf of the yucca plant also makes fine cordage, similar to that of the agave plant. The large dried codexes also make great shelter building materials, and as they are hard on the outside and pithy on the inside, make great fire coal carriers.
Now for another useful desert plant, the desert juniper. Unlike its larger cousin, which fills conifer forests, the desert juniper rarely grows above 10 to 15 feet tall. In the edible category, juniper berries make a great food and are very sweet. Some people mistakenly attempt to consume the immature white to bluish berries seen here, yet it is the mature dark brown berries which almost appear to have a sugary glaze upon them that provide the sweet flavor. These berries can be eaten straight off the tree or even processed into flour for making some amazing sweet cakes. In the medicinal category, it is once again the berries that have the most effect. These berries are rumored to work wonders for both kidney and urinary tract infections. The leaves, if you will, of the juniper tree are also used as a poultice for rheumatic conditions, although it is not considered very powerful. In the utility category, the juniper works wonders. The bark of the desert juniper is shaggy and makes a great fire tinder and was even processed into diapers by local Native American women. The dried bark is also easy to find in rainy conditions as the tree shelters it from the storm, making it a great survival fire tinder. The hard, flexible wood of the desert juniper was also a favorite bow-making material of Native Americans. The long and at times fairly straight, flexible yet hard branches also make great shelter poles and were a favorite shelter building material of Native Americans where the tree occurs. Not only is the desert juniper a dominant force in its ecosystem, it is a dominant force in desert survival. Here we have an amazing plant that grows all across the southwest, the buffalo gourd, or Curcubita botidissima. If you are a gardener, the scientific name may strike you as familiar. That's because watermelon is also a Curcubita, which explains the resemblance of the small gourds on the vine to watermelons. In the edible category, these gourds are split open, the seeds removed and dried, at which point they can be roasted or even ground into flour. In the utility category, like most other gourds, these gourds can be dried, hollowed, and used as a container, even a water carrying vessel. And, as mentioned in prior sections, both the vine and leaf make a great soap. Many people mistakenly believe the gourd is the soap. That is because they have never gone to the field and tried it out. The gourd will produce no lather at all. The leaves will produce a light lather, but it is the vine that produces the finest white lather. <laughs> 